something that gained a lot of momentum over the weekend and kind of unexpectedly was Velvet Buzzsaw, uh, a movie by um, David Gilroy. That, Dan Gilroy. Dan Gilroy. I knew I was going to mix it up. <laughs> Dan Gilroy. That kind of came out of nowhere, it seems like. Uh, you know, So Dan Gilroy, known for Roman J. Israel Esquire, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Um, Being Tony Gilroy's brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, he drops this this film, and I gotta say, like, I, I watched it, and I was kind of left a little bit confused. And I think where where I felt confused was I wasn't sure what type of what like what tone the movie was going for exactly. Right. And listening to interviews with him and listening to him talk about it, I think on a rewatch, I would appreciate the film a lot more because I would kind of know the lens that he wanted you to see it from. Um, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing about how this film was made or if that means that the film was made well or not. Um, I thought some of the performances were great, but yeah, it kind of left me with a uh, scratch my head a little bit. what did you think of Buzz Velvet Buzzsaw? Yeah, I agree. You know, going in, I was like, all right, dang, there was next movies coming out. Oh, it's a Netflix movie. Oh, it's like a horror thriller. Okay. Um, usually don't like horror movies. So I'll watch it though for, for, for the pod, you know, for content if, purposes, if it's more like get out or something like that type of horror film, I'll, I'll be into, it, I'll be fine, but it's not really scary. You know, <laughs> no. I mean, all like the quote scary moments are pretty goofy in general. Mm -hmm. Also, they're you, almost exclusively in like bright settings. It's not, there's no mm -hmm. jump scares, you know, um, there's not even a slasher film. So it's not really anything traditionally horror, but also it's so like campy when you has those scenes. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought like the whole like satirization of like the art world, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, like LA culture and um, just putting value in uh, inane things like art. I was like, that, that, that's a cool concept. You can do that with these kind of actors and these kind of characters and just go really hammy with it. I just felt like that in the screenplay conflicted with this uh, poltergeisty threat that's kind of nebulous, you know? So right. it, it almost seemed like the the horror elements or the the, uh, the 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 murder elements anyway were getting in the way of like any any satire or any message that he was trying to get across. So I yeah. still I found it entertaining just because I thought there was a lot of talented actors here and they're all pretty good in this, um, but it was definitely jarring and uh, I almost wonder what would the movie have been if you just kept all these like uh, crazy characters. It has dropped all the uh, ghost shit in, uh, entirely and just did just mm. satire. Like, could that have been better? I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head to a lot of the the way I felt about the movie. Just like the the satire mixed with the the horror aspects didn't seem to really blend very well together. Um, mm. I think I think the satire was the strongest part. You know, just seeing Jake Gyllenhaal be this absolutely ridiculous um and yeah some of the lines that he said and i you could tell that everybody was having a great time playing the characters that they were in because they got to be these ridiculous pretentious uh la art critics who take these you mm -hmm. know like you said inane pieces of art and are like really breaking them down talking about all this meaning behind them i mean for god's sakes jake gyllenhaal's character's name is morph vanderwall like what a ridiculous <laughs> name like all so these names the are so pretentious it's amazing um but yeah the horror part it also seemed to kind of not really give the movie a lot of direction by the end like it, they were like okay we gotta kill all these all these people who are profiting off this art and exploiting this this dead artist so they, they kind of just put them in situations where they died but it's like they were kind of doing like leading up to it and then all of a sudden it's just like okay everybody's gonna die by by art in right. some way and I think the other thing, the reason it wasn't that scary is by the end, every death scene is just a telegraph set piece. All right, now we're killing this guy somehow. Right. You know, yep. there was no mystery to it. So, all right, here, like, literally by the second time when, uh, what's his name? Uh, John gets hung by his tie. I was like, mm -hmm. you, you knew it was coming immediately. It seems like the lights turn off. Like, I just, and because it's not like, because there's no jump scares, because like horror movies can telegraph, uh, things all the time but usually they speak they can 
do it because it'll still be actually scary when you know it's coming. But this movie isn't interested in actually doing it that way, you know? So you're just kind of watching it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite character was Gretchen, played by Tony Collette. I thought she was mm-hmm. awesome. Um, oh, she also probably had one of the better deaths, uh, yeah. just having her arm get uh, get get yacked. So ridiculous. <laughs> but um, what one character I really uh, did not like by the end was uh, Josephina, played by uh, Zal Ashton. Yeah, like she she's in a lot of the plot. Like she's really the connective tissue for a lot of these characters, which are mm-hmm. you know throughout this world and. I don't know. She, I think she just descended into being very, very unlikable. Start starting off as someone that like her boyfriend cheated on her, and she's under under uh, appreciated at her job, at, yep. you know, working for this art dealer. Like, oh, okay, that that's a good start. And then it just totally goes off the rails for her, you know. Um, I really like Billy Bagnuson. I thought about him before. He did not get enough to do. Die too quick. <laughs> um, yeah. And there's one character that I think just didn't really. It was almost unnecessary. I thought John Malkovich, uh, his yeah. artist character, did just felt so superfluous. Like he was just kind of there, but they and also wasted just, whole scenes with him and other people that it just he just didn't feel important. Yeah, it, it almost felt like they really wanted to to do more with him to kind of explain maybe Deese like as a yeah. as an artist, like who he could have been. And they were like, you know what, we're just gonna have him go away because he's his drinking problem has come back. And then he shows up for the ending credits uh it was very <laughs> strange just like they were like oh yeah we gotta do something with him okay just go away um pretty much all the artists were treated that way like david Diggs, he was he was i think probably the funniest part of the movie for me like yeah. every time he showed up like when he's cooking in the kitchen and that was Big funny Joe Collins, oh my god that was hilarious um but <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mean, it felt like they really underserved a lot of a lot of the artists and focused more on the the critics and the people profiting off it, which I guess is probably supposed to be the the point. Like these these leeches profiting off other people's art, um, then meeting this demise. You know, it it just kind of felt like it was going in all these directions and didn't tie it together very well. And um, like it, they they had the part where you were learning about who Deese was and like his background and it was like, okay, so maybe this, there's going to be like some payoff here, but there really wasn't. You have N- Natalia Dyer, um, who mm-hmm. I thought of like my theory throughout was like, Oh, she's going to be like related to Deese. Cause she's always the one to find the dead people. Like it seemed like oh, she was always that. And then no, she just, she just is there to find the yeah. dead people. Like that's and her it, role. And in the end, she just goes back to Michigan. All right. Yeah. Okay, a little, cool. A little like, disappointing. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it, it gained a lot of attention over the weekend. You know, as Sundance people were talking about it, um, but really, uh, I think that this could have used a little bit more, maybe some some script doctoring, maybe just some more thoughtfulness on like the direction overall. Yeah. Well, it's just weird because Dan Gilroy's brother Tony Gilroy is like one of the most notorious fixers in Hollywood for this <laughs> right. very reason. Uh, notably, saved Rogue One recently, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you think he could have like seen the cut and been like, "Hey Dan, change this," because like him and Dan have written screenplays together, and like Dan Gilroy is obviously really talented. Um, and like again, like I, I think like he had the idea of of the of satirizing and doing it really campy and just going all in on on the LA art scene. That's fine. I think that would have worked good, but it ultimately ended up just being really clunky. And by the end, it just the beats were very uh, predictable. So disappointing given the pedigree you know yeah definitely 